Hello, this is Colleen Pearl the Cool Crone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This video will discuss the April 8th eclipse, President Biden and other political creatures. If you'd like to book a reading with me, please go to my website, thecoolcrone.com and look for book now. There you will see a listing of all the things I offer, as well as have an opportunity to book a reading. Thank you. The April 8th eclipse will be juxtaposed against the charts of Mike Johnson, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Hakeem Jeffries, Eric Swalwell, Adam Schiff, Jim Jordan, Joe Biden, Fonnie Willis, Jack Smith, Mitch McConnell, and Donald Trump. Now, let's first take a look at the chart of the actual April 8th eclipse. And if you follow my channel, you'll know that I've already done and released a video about eclipses for 2024 in general, as well as for March, the full moon video is about the penumbral lunar eclipse, which is happening in Libra on March 25th. For April, I will also be doing a video specifically about the April 8th eclipse and the month of April and the regular full moon in April, which is going to be on April 23rd. So lots of videos coming up about the moon, about eclipses, about April, everything. Um, so I'm not going to say too much about this uh, chart right now, just I want to cover a couple of very specific things. One is that this is in Aries, which is the sign of beginnings, and it is a north node eclipse. And as you may know from listening to me talk about eclipses, a north node eclipse represents an eclipse that is going to um, instigate new beginnings, big, new, dramatic beginnings in your life, plus it's in the sign of Aries. Now, we have had the eclipses going into Aries and Libra for the last uh, year or so, and I want to point out something else that's very interesting. The March 25th eclipse occurs at five degrees of Libra, and the ascendant for this eclipse is almost at five degrees of Libra. It's actually at six degrees of Libra. Ever since last fall, we've been having eclipses that really hit the cardinal signs, especially those born in the early degrees or the very last 10 degrees. So if you're a cardinal sign, you've probably been hitting, getting hit a lot with where am I going? What am I doing? What can I let go in my of in my life? And what do I want to start that's new? And if you're not doing that, look out because the universe is going to kick you through the door and force you into some new beginnings. All right, so let's move on to our uh, series of subjects. And I've entitled this section, Political Midgets. So that tells you what I think of the people who are coming up next. Mike Johnson. He is a Republican from Louisiana, and he is our current Speaker of the House. Now, there are not many connections with this eclipse except for, let me go to his chart, except for his natal Mars, which has pretty much all of the eclipse planets piling up on it. So he's going to have an argument or a fight with someone that's out of his control and it could force him into an ending. Now, I'm not sure that it's going to force him into an ending of his speakership, but this is an opportunity for that to happen. It may be a little far-fetched to predict this with so little to go on, but I can tell you that by June, he will be out of Congress because that's when Jupiter is going to be catching up with his natal Saturn. And that, it, to me, is going to be a big, splendid, splashy ending. So even though this trines his son, I think it's still going to be bad for him. He has Pluto now in the same house as his son, which is preceded by his north node. So he's going to be going through a lot of um, upheavals and transformations in whatever area, whatever house his son and north node are in. 
And can I say it? This is going to be his actual come to Jesus moment where he has to learn to be truthful. All of his house of cards about all the religiosity and the image that he portrays and all of that, which is his son, is going to be torn down. So too bad, Mikey. Okay, by the way, Mikey was also born on an eclipse. He has the sun, the moon rather opposite his north node and conjunct his south node. So eclipses are big for him. And probably he can't deny that, but he probably does because he's super, super uber religious. His sun and north node are in an early degree of Aquarius, which would be more impacted by the March 25th eclipse. And I'm going to discuss that in a minute. Um, because that eclipse is in the fifth degree of Libra. So that will be more the timing of his demise. The Saturn-Mars conjunction sits on his Venus for this eclipse, which is no bueno for him. And it may be the case that between the two eclipses, he may undergo severe pressure resulting in him resigning from his post or being thrown out or just making some bad decisions. So let's look at what we have to say about Mikey with the uh, March 25th eclipse. So also for that March 25th eclipse, there are some positive, I don't have a chart for it, but just so you know, there are some positive things there. So he may have a moment where it really seems like he's doing quite well. And I could envision this as him actually going along with the Democrats and putting through some sort of legislation that the Republicans really hate. And so by the time we get to the April 8th eclipse, it's not good for him and they decide to let him go. Now transiting Pluto is trying his actual Pluto down here. Um, and that is a long-term aspect. That's not going to change things in the moment. But it is um, at a rather sensitive point. They're both on very early degrees of uh, Libra and Aquarius. So that's, that's going to be him saying, wow, I really need to look at these things. It may not be bad for him per se. It may just be a real wake up for him. Transiting Neptune is sextile his Mercury. So his ability to connect everything he thinks and speaks about to religious concepts is strong, very, very strong. Um, the eclipse, Jupiter is sextal Venus, which means he's going to get a boost from this eclipse also. When you have multiple aspects that mean similar things, it increases your chances of having that thing happen. The eclipse Venus is conjunct his natal Venus. That's very, very powerful too. He may just be in a religious ecstatic thrall for about a week surrounding his eclipse. So he may think that he's not only Moses, but now maybe he's, uh, you know, St. Paul or something too. Who knows? But watch out for that second eclipse on April 8th because that is not good for him. All right. So let's move on to our next subject, which is Marjorie Taylor Greene. So MTG has this eclipse all over her planets. Again, we have no birth time for her, as we had none for Mikey, but we have some connections that are significant. The Saturn-Mars conjunction is on top of her natal Jupiter. This will squelch her plans for expansion and reduce her luck in making things work, especially in Congress, because I have a feeling that with her Jupiter there, she has been lucky working behind the scenes. Remember her first year or her first term, she had no committee assignments. So she didn't have the opportunity to schmooze people and talk them up during committee meetings or on the breaks from committee meetings. So she had to actually go out of her way to make connections with other people in Congress. Uh, now she's on a few committees, so now she doesn't have quite the amount of time that she had before, but it seems like she's just going for the crazy. The eclipse itself, the sun, moon, and the north node are going to connect with her Chiron and Venus in Aries. So something meaningful to her has to be let go. Her actual sun here is at five degrees Gemini, which tells me that the lunar eclipse on the full moon 
for the 25th, which we'll be talking about, will also be a kicker for her. She'll be double dosed with having to let things go. And if she resists, the choices will be made for her. The eclipse planets are also squaring her natal Mars and opposing her Uranus. Uh, creating a sort of angry quagmire of energy. This will not be pleasant for her. So since we have no birth time for her, some of these connections are hard to make. As For instance, to her moon, we can't tell about her moon at all because there's no birth time. But the eclipse Neptune is square to her natal Mercury, which makes her prone to cults. Now she's already prone to cults, her um, Neptune is opposite her sun, and that is a kind of a classic uh, configuration for people who are prone to be sucked into cults. Um, Uranus and Taurus is sextile her natal Mars. Um, this makes her again prone to cults, extreme thinking, extreme action, and fantasy. The eclipsed Saturn is conjunct her Jupiter, putting a little kibosh on her enthusiasm. But with Jupiter close by, it's not for long. The eclipse Mars is square her sun, her actual sun, making her angry and unable to control her impulses. And that's probably also something that is inherent within her. But this tra particular transit of Saturn and uh, the Mars will not be nice for Marge. You know, it'll move on, but she is going through a period where she's really, really frustrated. Mercury for the eclipse is square her natal Mars. So um, that'll cause her speech to be unusually brusque and brash. But her speech is usually brusque and brash anyway, or at least that's what we've been seeing. So um, not particularly sure what's causing that, but it's not good. And I'm predicting that Marge will have a good moment in Congress or on the news surrounding these eclipses uh, around March 25th. But as soon as the April 8th eclipse begins to influence her, she'll go back into the shadows. It doesn't seem like, like I don't see her being indicted yet or forced to leave Congress right now, but it'll probably happen later in the year. Okay, so let's move on to Jim Jordan another one of my really favorite people. So for Jim Jordan, the eclipse planets really fall on top of his Jupiter. We don't have a birth time for him, so we can't be really sure where his moon is. If he was born right around noon on the day of his birth, then his moon would also be involved with this big kibosh of the planets from the eclipse. So he's gonna feel the eclipse big time because most likely, his moon is in the sign of Aries. We just don't know where in Aries it is. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this eclipse is going to really hit him. He has an anger problem, which he tries to keep a secret, but he also has an ego problem, which he cannot keep a secret. So during this eclipse, he won't be able to hide. There's something that he won't be able to hide. I mean, he has a lot of things probably to hide but something he's really not proud of, something that is his Achilles heel. And I'm afraid this eclipse may bring some un unwelcome news for him. So this could be the um, case about the when he was a wrestling coach or assistant coach or whatever he was, and he didn't report the pedophilia going on around him. Or it could be something with his involvement with January 6th, or it could be something we don't even know about. Who knows? He also has the Saturn-Mars conjunction opposing his natal Pluto. So here's his natal Pluto, which is very close to Uranus. Um, and it's right across the sky from that uh, Mars-Saturn conjunction of the eclipse. So um, this is no bueno. Um, that's not good. I wish I knew what his rising sign was. That would make it a lot more interesting. So all I'm, I'm going to say is that this could be a really big problem for him. So I'm going to say probably uh, so long, Jimmy. This does not look good. All right, so we're going to move on to the old turtles. And there's only one old turtle that we have to look at, and it's our favorite turtle, Mitch McConnell. So Mitch McConnell, what is going on with you, dude? Let's take a look. Mitch McConnell's chart really connects better with the second eclipse, the April 8th eclipse, which is the main one that we're talking about today. 
We know he has a he's a one degree Pisces sun with his moon in Taurus. We just don't know exactly if his moon is at the very late stages of Aries or if it's deep in Taurus. We're just not sure because of no um, timing. Now, if he's born earlier in the day, say sometime between uh, six and nine o'clock in the morning, then that moon is going to be really bombarded by all these eclipse planets. If he's born more in the evening, then his moon will be safely over here in Taurus land. Um, it could even be uh, combining with the um, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which would bump it into this little stellium of planets, Mars, Saturn, Uranus, which this is not going to be happy when this hits for Mitch. And this Conjunction is happening about two weeks after the eclipse. It's happening on uh, April 21st. So I think that's going to be a big event for him. I think when those planets, when Ju Jupiter and Uranus become exact at 21 degrees, that is going to hit him right between the eyes. That goes right on top of his Mars, right on top of his Saturn, and right on top of his, his own Uranus. So I think that's going to be a big event for Mitch. I don't feel good about it. Um, God forbid this should actually be his sixth house. That would be horrible. Then that would be a a very, very, uh, I want to choose my words carefully, important health event. So I'm sure his health problems coming out in public are designated by Saturn moving into Pisces. He had a serious fall in March of 2023 that landed him in the hospital with a concussion and I think some uh, broken bones. Since then, he displayed a type of seizure, causing him to simply stop and stare into space for a minute or more. Back in 2019, McConnell had surgery after injuring his shoulder in a fall in his home. Uh, that was probably part of it, too. And then the following year, he brushed off questions regarding his health after he bruised, after the, the public noticed his bruised and bandaged hands. So this man has had many health challenges in the last five years, not to mention in 2003, he had a triple bypass. He has Mars conjunct Saturn in Taurus in his natal chart. So when things connect there, such as this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, uh, I just get very, very worried. This is a part of a square to his son. Now, we know that um, Mitch had polio as a child and that those difficulties are kind of built in, you know, for him for the rest of his life. He has, he did recover, but it did debilitate him uh, quite a bit as a child because he was born in an era where they didn't treat polio as well as they can now. It's, it's, it's virtually eradicated in this country, but it does still exist. So Saturn can often be a predictor of things that go wrong in the, tar in the chart, not just from the natal position, but when transiting Saturn triggers things. So Jupiter and Uranus are sitting on that stellium in Taurus with his natal Mars Saturn Uranus conjunction. He's conservative. He's disciplined. He's slow moving. So he really does exhibit that turtle iconography, yet he is a fighter. He doesn't give in. He's surprising in his reaction to things, yet slow to react. So that tells me that he most likely has a moon in Taurus. So moon in Taurus, people tend to be popular because they care for people, which is why he's a politician. Also, um, you know, Pisces people are surprisingly ambitious and enthusiastic when it comes to their careers. And they do make it a part, usually, of their career to show people that they care. That's that Pisces uh, nature. So I do feel that when Saturn reaches Aries in early 2026, Mitch will have more difficulty with his health, with his health, excuse me. Um, now he has stated that he's um, stepping down as minority speaker and he's stepping, he's not going to uh, run again for re-election. So he's retiring at the end of his term. The end of his term is the end of 2026, technically January 3rd, 2027. I don't think he's going to last that long in the Senate. I think that, especially with this conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus, I think that's really going to be debilitating for him and could be a major health event that causes him to step down even earlier than he wants to because uh, I think he's going to be forced to. 
I don't know. The other possibility with eclipses, you know, is when planets then come along after the eclipse and trigger the degrees of the eclipse, which is really um, 19 and 21 degrees of uh, Aries. That could be Mars coming into Aries. You know, Mars could hit those degrees later on and uh, trigger a health event for him. Or it could be when Mars hits this little configuration in Taurus after he's also had the event from Jupiter and Uranus. So there are a few things between now and let's say June, July, where I think Mitch McConnell may have some real challenges that cause him to um, uh, step down, uh, not by his own choice. Okay, so let's move on to our new heroes. And I have a few new heroes, and the first one is Hakeem Jeffries. He's my new hero. So Hakeem Jeffries is another one that we don't have a time for, but also he is affected by both eclipses. So there's, uh, even though there is no time, he does have some connections with this eclipse. Natal, his natal Uranus um, is in opposition to his, to the Venus in this um eclipse and this could give him moments of brilliance or make him the recipient of something incredibly lucky it's a big surprise it's uranus so we don't know what the surprise is going to be but it's going to be positive it's going to be really really good for him and that happens at the time of the eclipse um, the eclipse planets oppose his natal jupiter the rest of the eclipse planets down here oppose his natal jupiter um, which is in the sign of Libra. So something that should be decided fairly will drop in his lap. His sun, moon, and Mercury opposing Jupiter, which is his soul, that these planets together represent his soul, heart, and mind, will allow him to rise above the fray and remind people why he is elected to his office. This is a man who is destined to make history. The March 25th eclipse falls right on his Uranus at 5 degrees of Libra, so I'm sure that on that date or surrounding it, Mr. Jeff Jeffries will step into the limelight and accept his bouquet. It may be surprising, but no doubt he will be the one to take it and make the most of the moment. Now, Pluto trines his Uranus as well, and that gives a lot more weight to this historical context and power. His natal Sun-Mars uh, conjunction, which is right here, Sun-Mars, um, is in quincux to the Saturn-Mars conjunction of the eclipse. So he's uncomfortable with the way things are, and this will cause him not to rest until he's moved some pieces on the chessboard and made a difference. Now, Neptune is opposing his Venus. I see. So the Neptune of the eclipse is opposing his natal Venus, which is also conjunct Pluto. Again, a very powerful positioning. This is somebody who comes across with a lot of gravitas, a lot of uh, respect from people. And Neptune is opposing that. That's the, not a cult. He's, he's, not, he's not prone to join cults. He's the fighter against cults. He is the person who wants to put out clarity and take away the fantasy and the gauze and the fog and the gaslighting. He wants to strip that all away and make things clear. And he wants to inspire people with what he feels is right. So um, I don't think that um, he's going to be swayed by anybody MAGA, but it does put his dreams and goals into question or could bring him extreme inspiration to achieve the things he wants to achieve in a magical or inspiring way. So, you know, it could be spiritual too. He could he could invoke some sort of John Lewis kind of vibe and get people to really go along with what he wants. And we cannot overlook the fact that the Jupiter Uranus pairing, which will reach exact conjunction on April 21st, is sitting on top of his natal Saturn, giving him luck, inspiration, energy, joy, and the ability to fly when it comes to his desire for longevity, work, determination, anything to do with practical matters in life. So his money, his security, nature, the earth, the planet, all that stuff is just really uh, falling into a positive groove for him. So that uh, Jupiter-Uranus pairing is right here. 
and um, that's right on top of his Saturn. Even transiting Mars and Saturn make a sextile to this configuration, um, giving more power and energy to his ability to get something done. So even though he's not speaker of the whole house yet, he is wielding great power, and he may soon be the actual speaker with or without his party being in the majority. There's just a lot of power here, a lot of ability, and kind of a sweet spot in between the two um, eclipses that really make me feel like he's going to get what he really needs. The next person that I'm going to talk about is Eric Swalwell. Eric Swalwell, again, we have no time for him, but um, his chart stands out for all the interactions there are between the natal and transiting planets. I mean, look at that mess. It's just a spaghetti bowl of connections. It's just crazy. So we'll work from the outside in. I'll run through the eclipse planets from bottom to top. So eclipse planet number one, Pluto. Pluto at almost two degrees of Aquarius squares his natal Mercury, uh, yet trines his Jupiter and Saturn. So he has Jupiter and Saturn up here. Oh, I wish he was a Capricorn rising because that would make this a beautiful thing with this up at the top of his chart. But um, Pluto is trining his Jupiter and Saturn, giving him a great deal of power. It also gives him a struggle to the, the square to Mercury from Pluto, gives him a struggle on a long-term basis to communicate clearly. So he may, um, you know, as he rises in his power in Congress or maybe even moving to other political offices, he definitely will want to employ strong speech writers. The trine uh, from uh, Jupiter and Saturn makes it much more intense, showing me that in the future he will advance to a much more influential position within our government. So like I said, he's going to move on to higher political office. Um, Pluto also makes a sextile to his Neptune right here. So Pluto's making a little sextile there. And so ideals are also up on a pedestal. So think back, when have Eric Swalwell's ethics and ideals not been up on a pedestal? That is just kind of his middle name. Neptune is also trine Uranus, telling me that he is operating on an almost spiritual level when it comes to his desire to make things right in our government. And he said many times that he was raised by two Republicans, two Reagan Republicans, and his choice to be a Democrat was not a choice he made lightly. So let's see here. Neptune is also trine actual Uranus in his chart, his, nep his uh, natal Neptune, his natal Uranus, excuse me, which is conjunct his sun, which is actually, um, I shouldn't tell you this because you're going to think differently of Eric Swalwell after this, but this is actually also an aspect that we find in Donald Trump's chart. However, Donald Trump is a Gemini and Eric Swalwell is a Scorpio, and we like Scorpios that are uncorruptible in politics. So because of these high ideals that he exhibits daily, any bills that he authors are going to adhere to the highest ideals possible. Uranus is opposing his son. The, this is transiting Uranus. It's opposing his son Uranus right here, um, showing that something surprising will happen to him that may catapult him into a new career. And this is going, possibly going to be happening around the eclipse. Jupiter is King Kunk's her natal Venus, so he may miss some opportunities or the payouts of any deals for him may be different in the amount than, than they first thought. Um, so he may have that issue with his finances, you know, that may not be quite what he wants them to be. But once he reaches a certain level in his political career, that will all be evened out. Venus is opposite, Venus from the eclipse is opposite his natal Jupiter and Saturn, which are conjunct in Libra, making him much more sensitive to the March 25th eclipse. The main eclipse planets 
and now I'm talking back about the um, April 8th eclipse, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Chiron, and the North Node are all opposing his Venus-Pluto conjunction, which may mean important things for Mr. Swalwell. There could be an acquisition of power or the gain of some sort of influence for him, but I do think that the first eclipse, may, March 25th, may be more impactful for him. So look for him to possibly be in the news at that time or in future news articles to reflect back on that period of time and tell us about some magnificent or, and dramatic changes that have happened in his life. All right, that is Eric Swalwell. And now we're moving on to Adam Schiff. Well, all I can say is hooray. We finally have a time for one of these guys. He was born at 613 AM in Framingham, Massachusetts. And this eclipse, he shows that his north node is conjunct black moon Lilith. So his connection with his feminine side, but also with his, uh, you know, things that are uncomfortable for him is going to be very, very important to him in his life. So something about that, I think, is going to play into his political structure. These two things oppose his midheaven, which is really your legacy, your life, what you're showing the world you are. So I think something about that, that could be reflected in his fighting for the rights of women, fighting for reproductive rights, fighting for LGBTQ uh, rights, you know, showing that sexual identity, sexual reproduction, sexual anything is not off limits to him, that he can understand it and he can speak about it, hopefully without embarrassment. I think that's a part of his mission is learning how to do that in his life. So that's what I feel is important about Black Moon Lilith conjuncting his natal north node right now. And don't forget, this is a person that just won the primary so that he can run for the seat vacated by Dianne Feinstein. So he is feeling the moment for women as well as his own vulnerabilities. And this makes him feel like the man for the moment. His natal Pluto is sextile to the Sun-Venus conjunction. This gives him tremendous powers of persuasion married to his emotional understanding of people and the situation at hand. Now his natal Pluto is right here and see it is sextile to his son venus which is very close to his um ascendant it is not right on his ascendant his ascendant is 13 cancer his son is only at zero cancer and his venus is also at zero cancer so these um, are operating in the first house so you get this intense uh sensitivity from especially sensitivity to women from Adam when you first meet him. And also his Black Moon Lilith in his natal chart is actually right on top of his ascendant. So this is a big important thing for him to have Black Moon Lilith transiting and very close to his node at the time of an election. Transiting Pluto is making a King Kunx to his son in Venus, promising that he may be uncomfortable with this power or he may see others in positions of corrupt power and be willing to work to bring them down. A lot of times people who are slightly afraid of power or want to back off of actually wielding the full power that they have access to, when you give them a task, something to do, like take down somebody else who's corrupt, they're all in. They don't have that problem anymore. And I think that's the case with um, Mr. Schiff. He needs a task. He needs a, a bad guy to take down. <laughs> that really helps him. A lot of people, a lot of politicians are like that. Now, transiting Neptune is trying his um, natal Mercury. And uh, the, again, ideals, higher concepts are foremost in his mind, which is why we often see Mr. Swalwell and Mr. Schiff side by side on many issues, side by side on many news programs. They speak a similar language. Now, his natal Saturn is in its dignity in Capricorn uh, in his seventh house. So very committed to his partnerships, you know, willing to do the long term, long haul thing, sextiling the transiting Mars, Mars Saturn conjunction up here from the eclipse. So that's actually a positive for him. 
When it comes to planets like Saturn and also Jupiter, you really do have to take it in context. You have to look at where they're falling. What are they, who are they affecting? Now, his natal Saturn is very, very strong. Saturn in Pisces is not so strong. Mars in Pisces is not so strong. So this is a gentler energy encouraging him to stick it out, to stick to his commitments, to stick to his ideals. So he is surrounded right now by people who really believe in his abilities. The eclipse is just just totally over overblowing his 10th house. So he's got a lot of public support. He's got, just imagine these are all people, very powerful people and donors in his 10th house. Really, really important for him. And yet to come that Saturn and Mars, they won't stay exactly conjunct as they go to hit his, his midheaven, but it's going to be very powerful him, for him when, when it does hit his midheaven. People believe in his abilities. Again, they, they also, um, they want to protect his, the ideals that he promotes and he will promote them, but people feel that it makes him vulnerable to have such a broadly liberal and left-leaning ideals. I don't really see any big negative things for the March 25th eclipse. I think it's all on the April 8th eclipse. And again, it's pretty positive not anything, you know, horrible, but this will be the beginning of his season of really uh, campaigning for that Senate seat out in the open and really, really publicly going after his opponent. So this new beginning with this eclipse is going to be very powerful for him. And like I said, all the planets in the 10th house are really going to help. All right, let's move on to Fonny Willis, another hero. Okay, Fonny Willis. So here is her chart. So Fonnie Willis, of course, is the prosecutor in the Georgia election interference case. This is another chart with no birth time, but Pluto at almost two degrees Aquarius squares her sun. We, we know about people's sun. What we don't know without a time is the moon and where the, where the houses fall. So we have Pluto squaring her sun. And of course, this is why they're trying to tear her down and question her integrity and motives. So there are trines to her natal Pluto and sextals to her Neptune. Having a square to your sun from Pluto is not something that goes away in a few weeks. Um, they'll, this'll hang on for quite some time, several years in fact, but Ms. Willis is no stranger to challenging times. She will have a hard time with this aspect for at least the next five years. Transiting Saturn and Mars at 14 and 13 degrees Pisces respectively, both trine her Mercury widely trine her Venus and make a King Kunx to her Uranus. The Saturn Mars trine will give her speech a practical yet magical edge, which we saw during the hearings. But the King Kunx to Uranus may show her uncomfortable even in the courtroom because she's not used to being in the witness box. And I think we also saw that in the hearings. Neptune opposing Lilith explains why the investigation into her and her investigator um, I can't remember his last, his begin, his first name, but Wade, um, why it wa wandered into such salacious territory. Now, transiting Venus, making a King Kunx to her son, for most people, would just really put them on the defensive. They would be very uncomfortable, but she displayed a bit of that. She was uncomfortable, but mostly she was angry. She displayed her emotions in an unfamiliar range. We are not used to seeing her in that way. And this is another one that I feel will have more connect connection with the fall eclipses, which may coincide where when she finally gets to try some of her cases, um, which I do think will have to be split up just because um, the judge McAfee doesn't know what else to do. He just can't imagine that they can have all those people in the room, not imagining that Willis is still trying to flip people. So she's going to bring that number down tremendously. But he's dealing with what the facts are now. And right now they still have, what, 15, 16 defendants. So he is dealing with the actual numbers that exist now. She is thinking about the future. And my next hero is Jack Smith. So Jack Smith, special prosecutor, no time, but a hell of a chart. Okay, so uh, there's a pileup of planets planets, excuse me, sitting atop his Venus. They're all coming into his Venus. The actual transiting Venus is sitting on top of his Chiron. So 
Starting at the outer bounds of our galaxy, we have Pluto uh, in the earliest degree of Aquarius trining Jack's natal Mercury. Very, very powerful and squaring his Saturn and Venus. So his critical thinking will be sharp now, but he may feel squeezed by the industry he's chosen for his career. Intense pressure will be testing his indictment of former President Trump in both the D.C. and Florida cases, and he will be working hard to improve or even file new indictments. There is a keen compulsion to make this right as Neptune is on top of his north node. He wants his case to be perfect. This makes him feel that it is both his destiny and responsibility to try this case as perfectly as possible. Now moving on to Uranus and Jupiter, which are within orb of their ultimate conjunction, due on, here they are down here, due on April 21st, Uranus at 21 Taurus squares his moon if his moon is somewhere between 20 and 29 degrees of uh, Aquarius. So that's where it will be if he's born in the morning and uh, there's no square. Now Jupiter, transiting Jupiter, is still at 19 degrees Taurus, but the conjunction here of the two planets on April 21st does not really affect anything else, so she, she's not going to be hit by that. Saturn and Mars at 14 Pisces um, square his sun at 14 Gemini, making him able to work for long periods of time, as well as pushing him to greater focus on a particular project and also providing a delay. So this is a lot of why the delays are coming in is because of Saturn and Mars sitting in that square um, to his sun. So he's not able to move forward. There's a big square there and squares usually are a challenge. Also, this Saturn involvement, this is going to cause him to question himself and possibly even doubt himself a little bit. It, this is a difficult period for him. He is not without human feelings, human emotions. He's not a robot, you know. As far as court cases go, this these are tough and they're so important. He's really feeling the moment. So this is, this is really hard for him. He also has Jupiter conjunct Uranus and Pisces in his natal chart. I'll just show you that little piece. So he's got Jupiter uh, Uranus conjunct normally very close to Pluto, which is what gives him his judicious power. Um, I don't know if this guy would ever be happy being a judge. I think he likes the prosecutorial chase and the challenge mentally of all of it. I mean, he is working with some very high energies here. So he really is the man for the moment, uh, you know, tackling all these silly things that Donald Trump can throw at you. And you may not think of Donald Trump as a, you know, a mental giant, but somehow he is throwing a spanner in the works legally for every attorney that goes up against him, every prosecutor that goes up against him. And so that's a challenge. And you need somebody like Jack Smith or Fonnie Willis really, you know, batting against him. Now, the conjunction of Jupiter, Uranus, and April is not close enough in, in degree to form any kind of a trine, even by sign. And this conjunction is particularly good for Smith and will boost his ability to take advantage of sudden developments in each of his cases. So you may find after the end of April, which coincides with that date for, the, uh, for SCOTUS, uh, that he's really hopping to it. He may even start before then. Um, Venus squares his natal Mercury, giving him an advantage with communications and even better, an advantage with women. Judge Chutkin and Aileen Cannon, both being women, this will be very good for Jack. Jack has some positive aspects taking place at the time of this eclipse, but I'm guessing that the fall eclipses should be even better for him. And I really wish I had a birth time for him so I knew what his moon really was and where these planets were falling in the context of his actual chart. But suffice it to say that um, he he kind of dodges a bullet with this eclipse, although every, every astrological aspect probably has some kind of connection to your chart. Not always, but a lot of them. And so he's actually going into a really good period, except for the delays with Saturn Mars delaying his cases right here. And he's, he's kind of taking it personally. He just doesn't want that to happen. Okay, so on to the former guy, 
And thank you guys for sticking with me. I mean, maybe you're using the timestamps and you're just zipping right into this one. But if you're watching the whole video, thank you so much. So here we are. We're going on to the former guy or his other name, Mr. Stinky Pants. Okay, this is Donald Trump. And I just love this picture. And I did give um, credit to the photographer in the um, in the description. I believe his last name is Halstead. And this is Mr. Trump's picture just from Wikipedia. And instead of a red or a red circle, he gets an orange circle because that's him. All right, let's look at his chart with the April 8th eclipse thrown in. So this eclipse chart shows the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Chiron, and the North Node opposing Donald Trump's natal Jupiter, Juno, Chiron. And it doesn't really oppose Neptune, but Neptune is on uh, the ascendant of the eclipse itself. So the ascendant for the eclipse is at about six degrees of Libra, and that's where he has Neptune at five degrees, 50 minutes Libra. Um, so it's interesting that this eclipse made sure to, you know, kind of stamp itself onto his chart uh, loud and proud. So his natal Neptune is opposing the eclipse planets and even opposing his Venus to a certain extent. Now, Mars and Saturn are conjunct in Pisces in his eighth house, which is not great for anyone's health. Even though this is not a health house, it is a sex, death, and taxes house. So this is going to be debilitating to his health, tremendously debilitating. And then we see Pallas Athena in his sixth house. This is the pattern builder. So when he gets into a routine that he likes, he just keeps doing it. He has nothing, nothing here that is going to stop him from doing this. He, he has transiting series opposite his son, but he does not have anything opposite uh, Pallas Athena that stops him from this patterned behavior, which isn't good. The eating the McDonald's, taking the over-the-counter pills, taking possibly not over-the-counter pills. This is not good and nothing stops him from that. Now, Saturn rules his sixth house for health. So we have to watch Saturn and the movement of transiting Saturn carefully. And right now in the eighth house, this is no bueno. Also, his eighth house is Pisces, which, yeah, it's the last sign. That, that, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's always there. So, I mean, we're all going to die. It doesn't mean that nobody's going to die. Um, just because you have um, Pisces somewhere in your chart, everybody dies. So the eclipse Jupiter, let's look at that. The eclipse Jupiter is within orb of the conjunction with Uranus and sitting on his midheaven, which clobbers it, the, the midheaven. Now, what does this mean? So Jupiter makes things bigger and Uranus is unpredictable, surprising, eccentric. And given all of Trump's legal entanglements, we can assume that there will be an unpredictable blow up that will be made bigger by virtue of something inherent to Donald J. Trump. And it will all be very public because it is on his midheaven. Given that this is a south node eclipse, something important to him having to do with foreign things on the internet is going to end. So if he has a lot of foreign investors on his truth social platform or whatever the platform was that he's selling, that's going to fall apart on this eclipse. That's just not going to be going on anymore. Or it gets shut down. Maybe it gets shut down by, you know, some sort of regulatory agency or the government. But it's it's not good. It's just not good for him. Now, he has a sale pending, right? It looks like it's going to be doomed because he's overblown the value, which is what he does. Um, so, you know, it might not even get sold. But if it does and it's still going or even, you know, whatever's going on with the platform, it's going to get probably get shut down. Another uh, possibility is that he just doesn't meet the criteria for his buyers. I know that he had um, overblown the value of the platform, and yet it still wasn't valuable enough for the buyers and their criteria for what they would actually invest in. So that's very interesting. All right, so something's going to blow up for him, and it has to do with the internet and uh, social media and money, and it's not going to be good for him. 
Um, I think something that's even more on the nose for him is the south node ending possibility of this eclipse with the sun and moon in Aries making a sextile to his own sun Uranus conjunction in the 11th house. Uh, groups, hopes, dreams, wishes. We could see some very, something very meaningful for him, namely his desire to be president again, uh, his desire to be a billionaire again, his desire to be the most powerful man in the world again. He will never be any of these things ever again after this eclipse. This eclipse is the ending. It's just got a lot of energy for ending right here. Most of his life, Trump has parlayed other people's money. And right now, Pluto has entered his seventh house, which is tearing down his partnerships that are not grounded in reality. So any business partnerships that he has that are based on uh, fraud are going to fall apart. Um, and that's going to be lasting for him for the next 20 years. So effectively for the rest of his life, Pluto is going to tear down anything that is not grounded in reality. Now, Saturn is conjunct Mars in his eighth house. That's of other people's money. And he also has Neptune there. So having Saturn and Neptune in the eighth house means he will be parted from money belonging to other people. It is also not good for the financial outcomes for his legal battles, of which he's already a three-time loser at the time of this recording. Now, March of 2025 will be a bad time for his money, as that's when Saturn will come into exact square with his Sun-Uranus conjunction, his natal Sun-Uranus conjunction. However, there are some astrologers who think that the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction of April 21st will be a nightmare for him. Now, this conjunction is directly over his MC, a very, very sensitive point in his chart, and it may have the effect of just blowing up everything in his life, given that he's doing a fairly good job of blowing things up even without the conjunction. I'd say we're in for some fireworks from March 25th to, say, April 15th. I think it's going to be an S show for Mr. Trump. Unfortunately, this may mean terrible things for his health. The ruler of his MC is Venus, um, which will be in Aries for the eclipse, which points towards his head and neck being very vulnerable. Since Venus is opposing Neptune, he may also have some sort of medication or poison also playing a part in whatever happens to him. Whether this health event is the result of poisoning, over-medicating, a stroke, a cardiac event, or something, um, you know, him just breaking down psychologically, that could also happen. His days of controlling anything in his life are most likely over. We can already see the signs, his slurred speech, his random noise making, this inability to stay in the current time frame when speaking about his political rivals or his campaign. He really has lost connection with reality. So the coup de grace will be a definitive health event that firmly takes him out of the everyday world and has him relegated to a hospital or a prison or just a wheelchair. And of course, this means his ability to be involved in his court cases will be severely limited if he cannot speak or think clearly enough to give directives to his underlings. This could be wishful thinking on my part, but I am looking at the planets and this is what I see. Okay, so not a good spring and early summer for Mr. Trump. And now let's go on to our president, our favorite statesman. And again, thank you so much for hanging out with me all the way through this video, Joe Biden. So for Joe, the main group of eclipse planets, let me go to his chart, fall in his fifth house. And we do have a time for Mr. Biden. So we know very um, confidently that he does have Sagittarius rising and he's a Scorpio with a bunch of planets in the 12th house, which is why he's such a good sneaky Pete when it comes to politics. All right. The fifth house gives a big emphasis to his children, not his grandchildren, but his actual children, like Hunter. The sun, moon, Mercury, Chiron, and the north node are all King Kunks, his natal sun, his natal Venus, his natal Mercury, and his natal Mars, which is an uncomfortable situation. But Mr. Biden is a Scorpio and a mature individual who will not give in to his own discomfort or embarrassment. He's a seasoned statesman. Also, he is not under indictment, nor is he battling numerous legal battles. There is opposition from the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction to his Mercury. And that is here, and it is opposing exactly his Mercury. 
So I would advise him not to make any speeches during the days surrounding the eclipse, but that's all. He could spark some chatter by making a mistake when speaking. However, something's bound to happen. He has transiting Jupiter conjunct Uranus in his sixth house. Uh, so he will have some kind of unpredictable or unconventional dust-up that will need to be explained. He could have some minor injury during this time. But again, minor is the key word. Transiting Jupiter is going to travel up into his seventh house over the next couple of months, arriving at his natal Uranus-Saturn conjunction, which is very wide at the beginning of June 2024. This will not necessarily have a negative effect on Joe. It'll probably have a positive outcome for him. Maybe an uptick in popularity in the polls or Congress will begin working with him and agreeing to sign the border deal. Now, uh, Uranus is going to come right up to the edge of the end of uh, Taurus. And then on, in June, it's going to go retrograde for a long time. So it's not going to cross up into here for quite some time. So you won't have any big, you know, humongous blow ups or anything with him. Joe is approaching his Uranus return, which will come into effect in 2026. Uranus will march right up to the end of Taurus, never quite reaching Gemini, and then it's going to retrograde on September. Um, and I think that it stays retrograde, yeah, into 2025. So it, the rest of 2025 is pretty much retrograde, and then in 2026, it'll go direct. It'll move into Gemini at a more reasonable pace, and who knows where we will all be by that time. But this is when Joe will get his Uranus return, which is 2026. So 2026 may be the year that Joe decides to hand the reins over to Kamala, feeling that he's done everything he can do, and now it's up to her. As far as this eclipse goes, I don't think Joe will experience anything too awful. Here's the Mars-Saturn conjunction transiting his fourth house. May, may mean some kind of separation or argument, even an event, that will cause him to have to leave the White House temporarily, but more than likely, he'll just get angry at what he sees in the news about the orange one and double down on his efforts to defeat him in, in November. This conjunction trines his Mercury, so we may also get a feisty, carefully worded, dark Brandon moment as Biden shows his scorpion sting towards Trump. So that's what I have to say about Joe Biden, our fearless president. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching this video. This was really fun to make. I like doing these quick profiles on uh, on people who are in the news. If you have anybody that you'd like me to do this on, please leave it in the comments or um, send me an email, coolcrone444 at gmail.com. And thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the eclipses and I'll see you next time.